Live from the Las Vegas Strip Studio in Las Vegas, Nevada. Good morning. I'm Brad Stein. Welcome to Better Center Live. You can watch us daily, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on louisdiamond.com. Also, please check out YouTube at Louis Diamond. Today, we have one segment because that's all is needed when you have the three big bad boys here today. Two of them from the East Coast, one of them right here from the beautiful city, Las Vegas, Nevada. We are going to welcome our three handicappers today, Mr. Chip Trimbus. Ross Benjamin and Louis Bag of Diamonds, because we are going to talk NBA, college football, maybe some Major League Baseball, and of course, the most interesting play of the day. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning and afternoon, Brad. Afternoon to the All East right, guys, Coast. before we get into what we learned from yesterday, Louis, tell us how we can get in touch with Better Center and the whole purpose of this show. Uh, really, the purpose of the show is to uh, provide... <laughs> information to the sports better uh, from the novice all the way up to the pro it really doesn't matter what level you're at but uh, the future of assembling information is video it is tv and it's providing it in a proper format so you can be a better gambler when you look at these corporate uh, companies that are going out there and trying to become a sports gambling show instead of a sports entertainment show. Uh, you, you can see them tripping over a lot of things. And uh, that's where we're going to kind of uh, be a thorn in their side a little bit, because at the end of the day, what you can't take out of Better Center is a hundred years of sports gambling experience. So you can add some of these computer guys that are coming in and they're fantastic additions. They are the addition that we needed. So what you have are the street guys and then you have the computer guys and they have to meet. The corporate world isn't going to really let them meet. You will get the street and you will get the nerd and they will meet and that's how you will win at sports gambling. And that's what Better Center's true goal is. So stay in tune, bettercenter.com or my YouTube, Louis Diamond, uh, uh, YouTube forward slash Louis Diamond. Because if you just look for Louis Diamond on YouTube, you're going to find a lot of uh, uh, La Bamba stuff and uh, actually some <laughs> triple X rated stuff to go with it. So a uh, couple guys that can humble me very easily. All right, back to you, Brad. Well said, Louis Bag of Diamonds. All right, let's find out what we learned today. Uh, I can tell you that the Lakers are up three games to one from a real pesty little Denver Nuggets team. The Miami Dolphins surprised a lot of people beating the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we're going to start with Ross Benjamin. What did you learn? I learned that Miami is a, a team that I think is going to win around seven games this year. I, I really do. I, I You look at um, how they've done thus far. I mean, that, they were inside the number against New, New England for much of that game. As a matter of fact, they would have covered – in the opener at New England, if not for Ryan Fitzpatrick interception on first, second, and goal from the 11 with less than two minutes to go. And then uh, last week they played Buffalo awfully tough, and that's a good Buffalo team. And uh, yesterday, look, I mean, I had Miami plus the three. Uh, that now makes me eight and two with my last 10 pay selections at rbwins.com with my NFL paid selections. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I think Miami is going to be – I love Brian Flores. And I'd be interested in hearing Chip's opinion on this because he spends some of his time in South Florida. But, you know, they didn't quit on this guy last year when they started 0-7 and they, um, they, they went five of their last nine games. They didn't quit on him this year after, after losing their first two. And uh, Jacksonville, to me, again, I picked them under five and a half regular season wins, Chipper uh, and Louie. I think that uh, I, I'm going to stay with that pick. I, I You know, again, it's already made – but I'll stand by it publicly with that pick, you know. So uh, that's what I learned. Um, I, I, and you also looked at the fact that total went from 44 to 48. And uh, I'm glad that Louie got me off that total because uh, he liked the under and I looked at it further. And, and you know, I wasn't very happy at halftime when it was 21-7, but that game stayed under the total. And, you know, Brad, a lot of big line movements in the NFL the first couple of weeks that we're not ordinarily accustomed to. Thanks, Ross. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll tell you what I learned, and I don't know if I like what I learned, so I'm going to head to Chip there. But because yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick keeps throwing out a little Fitz magic, Tua Tagovailoa might be sitting on the bench, and I'm dying to see this guy play. What are your thoughts, Chip? 
Well, you know, I've been hearing about that even last night. Um, I mean, we said on the show here this week, Brad, uh, in your absence, uh, that they were room for two to get into the lineup. And, and now here comes Fitzpatrick going 18 for 20. And um, I'm thinking, let Tua heal, let him learn, let him adjust. Uh, many great quarterbacks have sat a year, including Aaron Rodgers currently. And um, it, there's nothing wrong with that. Trying to force Tua into the lineup, um, I don't see it right now. Miami, like Ross said, they're, they're looking like a professional football team, and the Jaguars are reverting back to what we thought they would be originally, and Ross is sticking by his original bet on the under there. And I think what I have to say about the, about the game is what I, I learned most is that Jacksonville went from being the most underrated team to the most overrated team in a matter of two weeks, Bingo. and it caught up with them. And it caught up with them. Bingo. So, um, that was that was my my deal from last night. Um, I ha- I'm happy I had the winner with Miami and um, had another baseball winner with Cleveland over the White Sox. So uh, things are moving along quite readily. You are absolutely right, Chip. <laughs> Louis Bagadines, yeah, I heard you saying bingo. Well, you know, <laughs> Chip hit it, but you know he he was a homer, but uh, he was all over Miami, and uh, uh, you know the he had the right colors going yesterday, so it was a beautiful play. So, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, I'd love to take a lot more credit for having uh, for having Miami and under, but uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, I really wasn't pulling trigger. I, I had that vibe going, and 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 the vibe, a lot of times that gut. There's a reason why that gut is uh, gives you that first instinct, and uh, it's tough to bet on that first instinct, but uh, it tells you to stay away from things. So. Sometimes it, took, it made me stay away from winter yesterday, but you got to follow that gut too. The gut's real. That vibe. If you're feeling, if you're watching the games and you've seen the screen, you've seen the line moves, you've seen this movie before. If you haven't, then you haven't gambled long enough. Which goes back to that es, uh, the uh, corporate guys, the young guys out of college, they don't have that good gut vibe because it hasn't been. They haven't been kicked in the gut enough and three old guys like us we've uh, taken some kicks <laughs> you think all right mr 100 years of experience why don't you guys follow me to game number one that is the nba the miami heat <laughs> sort of at the boston celtics the heat up three games to one this opened with a 214 over under and celtics minus two currently it's at 213 and minus three we will start with chip well, I'm very fortunate in this series, particularly. I've hit all four games, all four sides. Haven't used a total until this one. And the reason why I'm using a total here is desperate times when teams have to get back to fundamentals. And Boston is on the brink of elimination. And I expect them to be concentrating more on playing defense. And that's just part of it right now in the playoffs. It always seems like it uh, It was just my instinct here. As far as the side, um, I'd like to take Boston on the money line because if they don't win, they're out. And that would be um, how I would read this game. But my play is actually the under in the game. And uh, uh, I think Boston's going to play some defense tonight. Ross Benjamin. Are the Boston Celtics going to play some defense? Are they going to get back in this series or is it over? Well, they they certainly need to. That's part of the component to winning is uh, you better play good defense at this time of year. Uh, Look, if Chipper's giving you a total – uh, people, you should listen because I've been around him for a long time. He doesn't give out totals very, very, very rarely. So if he feels strongly no, about much. a total, I, I, I will, uh, I will definitely take that seriously. Uh, I don't know how could you fade Miami right now, Louis? You know what I mean? It's uh, you're, they're plus three and a half. Um, they've been undervalued the whole playoffs. They continue to get a lack of respect. I, I get Boston's back is up against the wall. But one thing that's been consistent about Boston has been their inconsistency. Uh, they get up big leads. They squander it. They, there's, they just don't play a full 48 minutes. And right now, it just looks like Miami's a team of destiny, Brad. You know, so I, right now, my lean right now would be on taking the heat plus the three and a half. I agree with you. A rookie unknown Tyler Harrow to score 37 points. Yeah. I mean, they, every yeah. single game, the heat finds someone to step up. It's going to be a tough one. Louis D., what are your thoughts? You know, my thoughts are I really missed the boat on this series simply because, you know, I have Boston at 10 to 1. But, you know, Miami has these dogs every single time is just, um, 
you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed I missed it, and uh, I'm not going to jump on right now. So uh, I'm just going to pass on the on the I'm, I'm passing. So I don't have anything of value to offer. You're passing. Uh, James yeah. Harden can take a lesson from you on that. <laughs> 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 that yeah, was my yeah. goal. <laughs> yeah. T. Tarden, man. Oh, boy. Yeah. Let's go to game number two, Louie. I know you might have something to add on Middle Tennessee uh, at University of Texas, San Antonio, the football factory. They come in <laughs> minus seven, and I believe the over-under was 60. you have anything to add on that game? Uh, well, let me tell you how I played this one out. Uh, in the beginning, I told you the line was going to be, you know, steamed up. Opened up at six and a half, quick steam to seven, but then it went back to six and a half, and now it went back to seven, now it's back to six and a half. So what I did is I, I did the six and a half, but I bought it down to six to get me a nice key number. So I was hitting it really hard so I can get it up, and hopefully it was going to cross some key numbers, and then I was going to buy half of it back. So it hasn't happened for me. In fact, it actually... Uh, recently has just dropped back down to six and a half. Now, I haven't gone back on buying it back quite yet with uh, Middle Tennessee State. I'm going to have some action on uh, San Antonio. I'm not crazy about laying the points with San Antonio. They're not bringing much to the table, but I do want to have some action against M Middle Tennessee State. They haven't been able to stop anything. Uh, and I, uh, I believe it could be a good fade. So I'll be still sitting on it a little bit, but I'll be buying a lot of it back at some point here today and keeping my action at the minus six and believing that's where the winner is. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That is where your diamonds are going, and you're sticking to it. That means we go to game three. It's college football this Growing up in South Florida, this is a big rivalry game, but how much of a rivalry is it when Florida State's coach has COVID, he's out, and Florida State hasn't been the same team, but it's Florida State at Miami. This opened up Miami minus 10, 57 and a half was over under. Now we are Miami minus 11, 53 and a half. So let's start with Ross B and get your thoughts on college football game number three. Let me get my thoughts on this first. Chipper. Is yes. Louis boring you that much that you got to read the newspaper when he's when he's uh, talking for crying out loud? I am. I'm oh actually God. doing research for the show. You have to understand okay. that I'm sitting yeah, here yeah, looking right. to come it's, up with numbers for the show, Chipper. Just the, just yes. a little bit of advice. I'm at, I'm actually show. working Not before the show. Talk. <laughs> All right, get listen, back to listen. Chip gets paid so much money he doesn't get a chance to have a break. Okay, this a lot of pressure. Right Ross here. hears yeah. everything. I mean, uh, Chip hears everything. He knows everything that's going on. Oh, yeah, yeah he's, just, uh, he's a sponge. No two ways about it. Anyway, um, <laughs> having said that, Florida State at Miami. Uh, you're right. You made so, a good point right off the top, Brad. Uh, Mike Norvell, a uh, bright young coach coming over from Memphis, built that program into a top 25 program. Uh, it didn't transition very well in the opener as uh, as a 12-point favorite. They lost outright to Georgia Tech, 16-13, to who, by the way, that's the same Georgia Tech team that got blown out at home against Central Florida last week. Miami, start. Uh, this is a team, I'm telling you, keep an eye on them. They're going to get better and better and better as the season progresses. This Derek King, the quarterback for Miami, who came from Houston, over 300 yards passing last week. We saw him in the opener against UAB, really hurt them with his legs. Multi-dimensional, multi-faceted uh, quarterback that can beat you in many ways, experienced, smart, and something that Miami has sorely lacked over the years is stability uh, at the quarterback position and most of all productivity, and he's going to give it to them. Um, I, I just think that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a rivalry game, right, Brad? Last year Miami wins 27-10 to 10 on the road. Um, the five prior meetings were all decided by five points or less. I don't think that there, there's too much of a disparis, disparity here in this game for me to worry about those close games that happened in the past. I think Miami is much the better team in this situation. I can't believe that they'll let their guard down here. And, uh, you know, Florida State's got a big recovery period, especially uh, with their head coach working remotely and not being on the sidelines at practice, and he won't be on the sidelines at the game as well. Back to you, Brad. 
Thank you, Mr. Ross Benjamin. Now we go to the newspaper turning man himself, <laughs> all the way from the East Coast, Mr. Chip Cherimbus. Well, I'm back from the East Coast and in Las Vegas right now, but uh, this is a great matchup, Florida State and Miami in the past. Right now, this Florida State team has had such miserable seasons the last three, four years, and I th except that they have come to play when they've gone to Miami. They've covered, um, what is it here, if I can check my, my stats. They're 6-1 the last seven times they've played in Miami against the points. And this is an underdog series. The underdog has gone 15-3 and three against the points, and the road team has gone 12-2 and two against the points. I'm very sad. When I first saw this game, I really liked Florida State coming off that loss. They did blow a 10-0 lead, early lead to Georgia Tech. Maybe they were looking ahead to this. And I, I can't be too sure about the talent level because the Seminoles have been so terrible. Norville, like you said, is not going to be there. But this is a rivalry game. If we had Miami as our top play over Louisville last week, and I like this Miami team. They're 2-0, and and it's this King has certainly turned their offense around. But my gut says I'm supposed to take the Seminoles. And originally, I had this as one of the top rankings. I still have them, but I've, I've dropped it down in my, my pecking order at this time. But the, I think Florida State is supposed to be the side. They're the rival. Um, Miami has, hasn't has been – I mean, they closed out the terrible season last year, losing the last three games of the year. And um, we'll see what happens. But I'm going to take Florida State here one way or another. I like it. Bag of diamonds. Who do you agree with? Well, I tell you what, I'm going to break this rubber match up right now and make it a decider. And today, it's not going to be on your side, Chip. I mean, <laughs> I'm like Chip. I, you, know, you know, yesterday I was in the, with Miami, but today, I, well, you know. I, as long as 67% of the people are on Miami, I'll be happy. See, you know what, Louis, before you get to your analysis, if I can interrupt for one second, you know, Chip came up with a 10 minute analysis after he read the paper for three minutes. You see, I mean, talk about a bright mind. Anyway, back to you, Louis. He's a genius. <laughs> Told you, eye candy. We needed some eye candy, and oh, here goodness. he is. <laughs> L. Michaels of the sports gambling world. Uh, all right, so. No, I, normally, I love what Chip was saying, actually. You know, this is the road team does cover. Uh, the Seminoles have taken care of Miami. The history is certainly on the Seminoles. But this is, this is in my opinion, going to be the classic case of throwing the numbers out because of the name. Uh, Derek King is the name. And that we been riding it we talked about him from the beginning of the show all of us have chip just decided to jump off of our train right now and uh <laughs> i don't know why because we're winning I'm with staying. them and they crossed us pretty serious numbers from nine nine and a half up to eleven and a half you know ten and eleven are actual critical numbers so uh you know they crossed it and they crossed it fast and there's a reason for it so i'm on miami all right. Thank you, Louis. Did we go to game number four? That would be Tennessee and at South Carolina. This game opened up Tennessee minus two and a half, 48 over under. It is now at minus three and a half with a 43 and a half over under. Uh, let's go back to you, Chip. So I like that you were um, different. I like, well, I like this matchup. Uh, Tennessee's a very, uh, number 18, I think it is, in the country, and they're very uh, short favored here at South Carolina. Maybe the reason is they've only actually won. One in South Carolina, one of the last six. Um, it's, but South Carolina has some big changes. South Carolina has some big changes. Mike Bobo is coming as an offensive coordinator. They brought Colin Hill from Colorado State, a 50-year quarterback, tra graduate transfer, actually. So um, Tennessee's getting all the hype. they got 17 returning starters. But I think if they have 17 returning starters and they're number 18 in the country, this number's very shallow. And I'll take the Gamecocks here. You heard that, Ross B. Yeah, Are you going to agree with the chipper? <laughs> I, I, I do. I do agree with chipper. I think he's on to something. I mean, look, this is a Tennessee team that started two and five a season ago. They won their last six games, including a bowl game, uh, which catapulted them into the momentum of this year, returning starters, finishing strong into a top 20 team. Um, they're playing on the road against an unranked team, and it's a short number. 
Uh, if you look, Jeremy Pruitt, the head coach of Tennessee, is in his third year now in Knoxville. Uh, his first two, they have not got off to good starts. Now, I always look at those types of things. Uh, head coaching history, uh, because teams take on the personality of their head coach. For whatever reason, he does not have his team ready to play early on in the season. I think this is a huge danger spot for Tennessee on the road, and I do agree with Chipper. I'm going to take the home underdog in this situation. And that would leave a bag of diamonds. Louis Diamond, what do you think? First off, all I can say is I bit my tongue there, Ross, when you said that uh, Chip may be on to something. <laughs> <laughs> I bit my tongue hard. <laughs> So, uh, you know what, uh, I agree with what they're saying on the play. I, I can't pull the trigger on South Carolina here. So, uh, I, no play for me, but I definitely agree uh, that uh, something smells in uh, Gamecock land. So, Tennessee should be a play. They really should be. But I'm Well, not something smells Based around here in the studio. And I think we need to take a break because okay. someone might need to go to the restroom. You're watching Better <laughs> oh, Center Live not on that again. <laughs> Not that again. I didn't Make say sure you come back someone. this time. Come back this time, buddy. I, I will. Well, I got locked in the bathroom. I mean, God, yeah. our director, Eugene, starts opening the door of the studio. I'm in the bathroom, not the studio door. Come on. He wanted to bring the green screen in the bathroom. Brad, tell the bathroom. him the truth. The green screen is in the bathroom and you're sitting on the toilet the whole show. <laughs> Lay I think somebody's boy. full. Yeah, Pepto Bismol wasn't full working, of crap. guys. <laughs> I'm yeah. full of crap. That's the budget we crap. have here. Your from... green screen is a toilet. <laughs> I caught it from the diamonds of the Louis. All right, we're going to go to a break. You're watching Better Center Live on LouisDiamond.com, also YouTube at Louis Diamond. NFL next. Brad Stein here live from Las Vegas. Join us daily for Better Center Live with our professional handicappers, where you get sports information you can bet on. Stop gambling, start winning. Better Center Live. All right, welcome back to Better Center Live. You are watching Better Center Live. I'm Brad. We have Chip, we have Ross, and we have Louis Diamond. You can watch us on louisdiamond.com. Also, YouTube at Louis Diamond, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. A couple boys hanging out from Las Vegas. One guy from the East Coast, but we come here with 100 years of experience to help you make some money. And that's why we're here. We're going to go to the National Football League, guys. And our first game this is a big game, all right? Because that's all we do is talk about big games here. The Raiders at the Patriots. That is game number seven. Raiders at the Patriots. We will start with Louis Diamond. What are your thoughts? Oh, wow. The big game hunter, Brad, fires off the Raiders and the Patriots. Well, <clears throat> Raiders, big Monday night win. Very big, unexpected by me. But a very big win. Now travel to the East Coast. Patriots, very big Sunday night loss. Played on the West Coast. Now traveling back home to the East Coast. All the history just says the Patriots are the play here. Forget about it. This is psycho. This is a psychological play. It isn't about who, what, where, what. This is about a team that gets beat up on national TV versus a team that just beat somebody up on national TV. It always, I wouldn't say always, but in, it's in your favor to play the Patriots. Definitely gonna be in your favor to put them on a teaser. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I didn't expect anything different from you. You weren't gonna take the Raiders because you already went against them no. twice and they already won twice. Okay, got it. You expect them to go to two to one, Belichick uh, you know, and Cam so Newton to get things. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 that's okay. I, you know, I have a history of, making money against the Raiders. So I have a reputation to uphold. So right. know, back uh, when Mike Callahan read the, I picked to go against the Raiders in the beginning of a season and they went two and 14 against the spread that year. I didn't, I didn't back off all season long and I've been playing against the Raiders for a couple of decades. They got to spank got me it. a little bit before they're going to, they're not going to hurt me right now because I cashed a lot of tickets with them. I'll make my adjustments. This isn't the spot, my opinion. I got it. No, I totally get it. It's 2020, yeah. COVID-19, no uh, preseason games, very few crowd some places. I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. Um, that's we'll go working against me here. 
<laughs> that, that works against me. I just want to say that. that the works line against opened me. up a Patriots minus six and a half, but it is currently at minus five and a half. Over under is now 47 and a half. Ross B, what are your thoughts for this big game? Well, let me start by saying I hope I never cross Louie because he hasn't forgiven the Raiders uh, if, since they no. went 2-14 and 14 against the spread, and I certainly don't want to piss him off. So, No, no, no. What I was need, baiting. What, I, well, I, Louie, what do you need me to say right now that will keep you in your good graces anyway? Uh, getting <laughs> no, all no, serious. I faded the Raiders. I made a lot of money that year. Oh, okay. I was betting I against them. I, I knew going okay. in. No, no, no. So I can't piss you off. Them. Okay, no, I, I got that. Oh, yeah. You can all piss right. me okay. off all you want. You just got to be all prepared right. to Very take good. the return. I'm so much more at ease now when I give this analysis, Brad. I just want to let you know. Um, look, uh, Cam Newton coming off a huge game last week. You know, he didn't do much passing in week one, but last week he threw for 397 yards against a terrible Seattle secondary uh, I don't think the Raiders, look, they beat New Orleans last week. I wouldn't get carried away and say, hey, you know, their defense looked a lot better than people are making it out to be. That same team that gave up 30 in their season opener against Carolina. Remember, when they played the Saints last week, they were without Michael Thomas, their top wide receiver. Um, and uh, that defense, to me, uh, the offense may be playoff caliber. I question whether the defense is. Uh, having said that, uh, New England also lost a lot of key personnel from last year's defense that was so dominant. I think we're going to see a high-scoring affair here. You know, uh, I'm going to take a further look at this when I get off uh, off air. Uh, but I, my lean right now would this be to say you know, let's let, let's go over 47 and a half in this contest, uh, looking at maybe a 34-24 type game. I definitely Thank agree you. with that too. All right, that sounds good. Oh, just in all fairness to the Raiders, they were missing their best offensive lineman for that game too. But I'm Probably, not a homer. Yeah. I'm serious. I'm not a homer. No, you're not a it homer. It sounds pretty bad. It's I don't know what it is. I don't know. I'm drinking like the Denver Car Kool Aid. <laughs> all or I can say is, <laughs> all I can say is the Chamber of Commerce has been calling, and they've been saying Brad is doing a great job, Lou. Yeah, Keep him. give him a raise. But they just keep winning. Chip, back me up here. Chip, come on. You're in Las Vegas now. Back me up. Hey. They are 2-0, and and 2-0 and against the number. And uh, certainly, they should be brimming with confidence going into this game. But I think what Louis said and uh, a lot of what Ross said is right on the mark. This is a game where a team's coming off a big win at home as a showcase game. And there has to be a little letdown in, uh, in their mindset when they go to Carolina. Excuse me, when they go to New England. Um, I think the number when I first saw it was a little bit high, and which it made me think, uh, they're trying to induce me to take the Raiders. And uh, the Raiders are coming off a great performance. They beat New Orleans at home. I would want to fade them before I would take them. Yeah. I, can I add one more thing? I mean, for the viewers absolutely, and listeners absolutely. out there, and for us in general, if you look at New England's history under Bill Belichick, specifically under Bill Belichick, they do awfully well coming off a loss. And oh, yeah. awfully well coming off a loss is a home favorite. So, that's what would scare me about taking the Raiders. I'm not saying I'm going to take New England, but that's something to look at going forward when, when the Patriots come off a loss. Now, I, I get it. Tom Brady's not there anymore. But, again, I go back to the head coach, continuity, and you take on the per personality of your head coach. Back to you, Brad. Let me add on that one, Brad. Please. Go ahead. Please. All right. So, yes, when you get, uh, uh, when you get certain coaches – uh, you know, that's really, you have these opportunities. Something you can look forward to in Better Center in the future is, you know, I'm going to be breaking down coaches against the spread in all kinds of scenarios. And, and I'll tell you exactly why that's extremely important in your handicapping. You get a guy like Belichick and he loses. You're going to bet him the next week. Because he's not very rarely is he going to not cover that spread the following week. And if he doesn't, you have to double up and you kind of go Martingdale on them. You have to because he will turn you that profit. Certain coaches it hasn't happened very much lately in the NFL with the dominating. But Bill Parcells, when he was coaching, if you've been around long enough for that, uh, he just when he lost. It didn't matter. You go in and you hammer the following week. And if he lost two in a row, you really hammered the following week. You will not lose your money. Follow your coaches, guys. So touching on that one. 
All right. I'm not going to follow my coaches. I'm going to follow my three professional sports handicappers. I'm going to take on their identity. How do you like that, Ross? Your 100 yeah. years of experience. And we're going to game number eight. And that would Perfect. be, yes, the Cowboys at the Seattle Seahawks. This game opened up Seahawks minus three and a half with a 55 and a half over under. It is currently minus five Seattle with an over under 57 chip. Shoot. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Um, yeah. This is a really tough game for me, and I'll tell you why. We, um, we've mentioned it before. Um, sometimes there are certain teams or players that are, are, ne are a nemesis for you, and that, for me, is this Seattle Seahawks team. I just can't ever seem to get past Russell Wilson. I got beat Sunday night with New England, and um, two-point conversions are not. It doesn't matter. The game doesn't make it, and he always seems to come up big against me. I think Dallas is supposed to be the side here. Um, I don't know if they're going to be buoyed by their miraculous win over Atlanta um, last week, but um, Dallas does have some problems. They have some holes, and this is a pretty strong number. When you think that Dallas is getting five and New England only had was getting four and a half or four last week, um, it makes me think that Seattle may be the stronger side here. But to tell you the truth, I don't want to get involved because I still feel like I had my teeth kicked in last week. Lou, let's be honest here. You're cheating on Russell Wilson with Joe Burrow, aren't you? Yes. I'm um, cheating on Russ. You are cheating yeah. on Russie. <laughs> That's a good analogy. I, listen, I am not cheating on Russie at all this week. Absolutely not. Uh, the Cowboys showed me exactly what they uh, what are doing. Uh, and Russie right now is playing out of this world. And today's play is going to be out of this world in this game. This game has to go over the number. I know it's a high number. Uh, and there's a reason being I cannot see how this game slows down any shape, way, shape, or form. Neither team uh, has, was able to stop Atlanta. So neither team's going to be able to stop e each other this week. So uh, I see it as an overplay, an easy overplay, out of this world kind of play. Can you mm -hmm. add or subtract from that, Ross B.? I could add. Um, I don't like to yeah. subtract because uh, both guys made very good points. Um, it, look, the total is 56. That's the only thing that would steer me clear of the total. Otherwise, I agree with Lou. Uh, I, I said this before the season started. Look, and I'm going to say it again. Look at me in the eyes, folks. Seattle's pass defense is horrible. I mean, oh, yeah. Dude, yes. It wasn't yes. not only this year, but last year as well. And they win a lot of high-scoring games. So to Louis's point, I could see where he's going. This game, to me, has all the makings of whoever has the ball less is going to win. And yeah. when I, I think of that type of scenario, and you're getting five and a half, five points, whatever it is, Brad, um, it favors the underdog. So based on the fact that Dallas has a premier quarterback in Dak Prescott, um, tremendous wide receivers. And Seattle's poorest defense, I'm not going to say Seattle's not going to score, and Russell Wilson probably will have another big game, but we're talking about beating a number here. I'm going to take the points here with Dallas on the road at Seattle. Do you think those Seahawks would like a healthy Richard Sherman back in that DB backfield? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I mean, it would help, right? Oh, yeah. It would. Oh, so would San Fran. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well they they need they would take anyone healthy right now, San Francisco. Yeah. Their whole front seven is banged up. Yeah. And uh that's crazy. Yeah, for, out for yeah, the year. Who knows what's gonna happen like. there? That's that 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 game is gonna be wild. Uh you know, how do you how do you back San Fran? A, a team that's how been, do you back uh, the, the Giants who, uh, the Giants are one and eleven straight up in ATS as a home dog, you know. In yeah, the last how do you back years. them at any point in any time? Yeah, so that's that's a tough game, but it smells again. So uh, tough to play them uh, Niners, they but uh, they've actually uh, done well with the injuries. They, yeah. so you can't really knock them too hard. Yeah, let me can I and one more thing. You know, from being doing this for many many years, I notice, and I, I'd be interested in hearing your opinion too, Brad, and the other two guys. Is I've seen too many times where teams lose a lot of players injury wise, lose key personnel. In San Francisco's uh, case, two defensive linemen out for the year after injuries last week. Um, their two top running backs won't be playing this week. Jimmy Garoppolo likely won't play this week. 
And if he is, he's not going to be 100%. Usually when this t these types of situations come up, um, the old overused cliche is next man up. Well, that's all fine and dandy. And my experience is, is usually teams do step up the week after uh, losses like San Fran uh, occur, um, had last week. And it's over the long haul where those key injuries really catch up to them. So uh, something to keep an eye on. I'd be interested in hearing you guys' thoughts on that because that's just my personal experience that I that uh, my memory recall uh, where it takes me. I have a Sigmund Anyone? Freud opinion. I give yeah, I, I no. give you my best. Yeah, I give you my best Sigmund Freud opinion on something like that. You know, one thing about sports gambling, you really got to be into the psychological mindset of the field and where the field really sits. And being if you were putting yourself in the locker room in the shoes of this team, where is your mind? You know, LeBron's out today. So what's the rest of the Lakers going to say? Shit, LeBron ain't here for us today. You know what? We got to step up our game. And that's usually what happens. These guys are pros and even college athletes. When you're missing that one big player, they know it. You didn't have to tell them that. And that means they got to play twice as hard. And that's usually what you get. So a lot of people get that knee-jerk reaction and they bet against the injury. But what they're really doing is they're betting against 12 highly motivated players to show yep. that that guy's not that much of a superstar for us, even though he is. Yep. So you'll yeah. have to, you have to use and, that in and, your betting analogy. And it's hard to sustain that, though, Louis, over the long haul. You know what I mean? It's, it's okay initially – because the guys could step up. Once you start getting film on these guys, it's very difficult to sustain that next man up mentality for long periods of time. It's uh, yes, when I'm referring yes. to what I, I guess said, that's awesome. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And when you get that quick, uh, you get that uh, quick, yes, that first week or that first yeah. couple games, then that's, that's when you want to take advantage of betting on the injured team. But after that, it absolutely wears out and goes the other way if the injury is long-term. Agreed. Yeah, I agree with the next man up mentality. But when you have like three, four, five significant injuries like the 49ers, I, I don't know how a team can uh, overcome that. But we will find out. And Coaching. that brings us to the most interesting play of the day. And we're going to start with Ross Benjamin because he's been on fire today. Well, thank you, Brad. Um, the Pittsburgh Steelers are hosting the Houston Texans on Sunday. The line opened with Pittsburgh being a six-point favorite. It's now down to minus four. And I know a lot of people out there are scratching their head and saying, well, Pittsburgh, you know, they're 2-0, and oh, and Houston 0-2. Oh, and, and especially, keep this in mind, Houston is 0-2, oh, and, and both of those games were on national TV. So the public – is real the public perception is going to be how bad Houston is. Well, look at Houston played Baltimore and Kansas City. And I don't think I'll get much argument at this point of the season, uh, as early as it is, to say those are the two best teams in the AFC at this particular moment in time. Uh, on the other hand, Pittsburgh, uh, they opened against the Giants. They won by 10 on the road. You know, you, you don't put a star on your forehead for beating the Giants on the road. I already mentioned they're 1-11 straight up in ATS since 2018 as a home underdog. So I don't give a lot of credence there. And then you come home and you play Denver, a team that should be overmatched on the road at Pittsburgh with that great defense, uh, great defense last year anyway. Um, and you, you injure their top quarterback, Drew Locke, in the first quarter where he can't return, and then a backup comes in. Uh, Jeff Driscoll, and throws for 256 yards and two touchdowns. This has sucker pick written all over it, guys, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, it, everybody's going to jump all over Pittsburgh on this spot, and I'm telling you, Houston's a play. I wouldn't uh, Look, I wouldn't be not shocked whatsoever to get the outright upset here, but I'll take the points as an additional bonus. Houston plus the four at Pittsburgh is my most interesting play today, Brad. Chip, what's your blue yep. chip most interesting play of the day? Well, thank you, Brad. I've been killing it on our play of the day. Yesterday we had a, a Major League Baseball game, an easy winner. Cleveland over the White Sox, scoring four runs in the bottom of the seventh. And I'm coming back in Major League yeah. Baseball again. We have the White Sox on a five-game losing streak at home, an underdog against Chicago Cubs and 
Hugh Darvish. Darvish has been really good to us all year. He's the favorite here. The money's coming on Chicago White Sox. are not so overpowering, but I think that the, they're telling you the Cubs are to play here. Once the White Sox clinch, and they um, since 2008, this is their first time they're making the playoffs, they haven't won a game. They were number one in the NFC, AFC Central and have lost five straight. Minnesota's won four straight. Now Minnesota's got a one-game lead over them. White Sox may be just waiting for the playoffs. I'm going to play the Cubs here. That's my most interesting play. The Cubs favored on the road with Darvish over the White Sox. Aren't you just interested to find out what the diamonds of the Louis, his most interesting play is? Please enlighten us. Geez, I'm interested to find out myself. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So uh, it's going to be my Friday teaser because uh, I love to play the teasers in the NFL. And uh, I want you guys to get used to getting my uh, Friday afternoon teasers. And this week's NFL teaser will feature the Arizona Cardinals. Of course, Kyler Murray. Why wouldn't we be staying on that train? Funny how everybody else is on the train now. But remember where the train started, right here with Kyler Murray. So we got that. Joe Burrow, you could throw him on the teaser as well. He gets his first win this week against the Eagles. You could throw him on the money line as well. Uh, another team you could throw in your turn is going to be the Washington Redskins. They might even be a money line play as well. They may beat Cleveland this week. Big win for Cleveland. I don't know if they're going to be able to back to back that. Uh, then uh, the uh, my last team in the teaser. Oh yes, the Sandy the San Diego the L A Chargers absolutely will get a win here. Uh, Herbert, uh, for what I saw last week, I got confidence to pull the trigger on him right away. So I'll roll with those teams on a teaser this Sunday, but join me Sunday morning because I'll have parlays and teasers and picks. Oh, my. And tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Pacific time, I'll be here with Dell and Tony going over the rest of the college action. Back to you, Brad. Why, thank you. My 100 years of experience, you are off the hook. You can leave. You can go take a nap, do some more work, watch the games. <laughs> Have a wonderful weekend because we are done here. We'll see you next time on Better Center Live, usually 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, but just like Louis Diamond said, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow to get some great college football picks. Thank you to our entire fantastic, beautiful team, Louis D, Chip, Dill, Ross, Tony, and, of course, our producer, our director, Eugene and Spotlight Eugene Film Production. Is. Thank you. You can watch us on LouisDiamond.com. Also, check out YouTube at Louis Diamond. I'm Brad. If you don't play, you don't win. Have a wonderful day. Get out of here. Bye.